Hi, and welcome to um, the AllieStamps.com video tutorial library. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to watercolor with watercolor paper um, your markers in an aqua painter. And this is the card that I'm going to be demonstrating this technique to share with you. Um, all of the colors shown on this card are all going to be retiring at the end of June. So you only have until the end of June to order these colors. And they're only available while supplies last. So I would encourage you to get your orders in as soon as you can. We've got Mellow Moss, Handsome Hunter, and Brocade Blue. First, I am going to take a piece of watercolor paper. And I have trimmed this paper down to four and a quarter by three and a half. And then I'm going to take my stamp set elements of style and I'm going to take this large bloom stamp. Now whenever I am stamping these larger images I like to use a tile underneath them and you can get this at any home improvement store. This is just um, a bath tile and you want to make sure that you get a nice smooth finish. You don't want any veins um, or texture to your tile. And I have also, this is an oversized tile. I started out with a smaller tile but it didn't fit my background stamp so this is a larger tile. So I'm going to put my tile down and my watercolor paper and then I'm going to take my stamp. Um, and this is just stays on black ink and you're going to want to make sure you use stays on whenever you're watercoloring. Um, it's a permanent um, fast drying solvent ink and that means that it will not bleed or run when you go through with your aqua painter to watercolor it. I'm just going to stamp that down like so. And that tile really helped give me a better impression than I would have otherwise had. I'll take away the tile. And then I'm just going to go through and tear off part of that paper. And along that torn edge, I'm going to take Mellow Moss, and again, this is a retiring color, and ink that up. And I just cut all of my Stampin', the Stampin' Sponge comes in large circular wedges and I cut um, pieces off of, little pie pieces off of it, put them on a clothes pin um, and just label them so I know which sponge is which and then your fingers don't get all inky because you're holding on to the clothes pin. I'm just going to sponge up the edge of that to give it a little bit color, more color. And now I'm going to take my Stampin' Write markers and I'm going to use the brushed end of the marker and I'm going to color on the image wherever I want my darkest area to be. So bear with me here while we go through this steps. That's good enough. And go through with your lighter color green first. And then this is Mellow Moss, like so. And then this is Handsome Hunter. All right. Now I'm going to take my aqua painter. And the aqua painter, um, you never run out. It just is regular water that you fill into this barrel. And then screw on the lid. Take off that. And you've got your brush. And there's... Um, a mechanism here that helps release the water according to pressure so you don't have to worry about spills. You get just the right amount of water that you need. So I'm going to start with my blue and I'm just going to use the aqua painter to kind of scribble over where I put um, the marker itself to blend out the color. And you want to be careful that you don't touch the other colors like I, I did accidentally there. Um, it'll be okay, but you want to avoid touching any of the other greens while you're doing the blue stage until that dries. So you'll just let that dry. Um, you don't want the blue to still be wet when you come back through to do the greens or else the water from the two different areas will touch each other and it'll pool the ink together. You can see how this is kind of an example of what you don't do. Um, 
that's starting to suck that green into the glue. So you want to let this dry first. So while that's drying, I'm going to just show you the upper portion of the card. And this is Textured Handsome Hunter. And I'm going to take this image from Elements of Style as well. I'm going to ink that up and stamp it in the corner of the cardstock like that. And then I'm going to take, um, this is a ribbon slider that comes in the Vanilla HodgePodge hardware. And I'm going to put a piece of quarter inch narrow grosgrain ribbon through it. And this is the spring moss color. I would assume that this color of ribbon will be retiring. We haven't received the um, accessory retirement list yet, but this color is meant to line up with Mellow Moss, and Mellow Moss is retiring. So I would imagine that this color of ribbon would be retiring as well. Trim those ends, and then we'll take a mini glue dot, press the ribbon slider and ribbon on that. And stick that down. All right, let's go check on my flowers. It looks like they are dry. So we can go through now. And since the flowers are dry, um, you know what? I, I want a little bit more darkness to those flowers. So I'm going to take my marker, and you want to make sure it's dry before you go in with another coat. And I'm just going to add some more brocade blue. I'm just deepen it up a little bit. It's best to never overdo the ink and put too much on the first try because you can always add more, but you can't take away. So it's best to do this in steps and stages. And the more layers of color you have, the more watercolor it's going to look. So I'll just blend that out. And I'm being really careful here to um, not go anywhere near the outside edge of the flower so that I can go through with the aqua painter and do the green as soon as I'm done with this without having to let it dry a little bit more for time's sake. All right, so when you're ready to go into another color, you're just going to scribble off the aqua painter onto your grid paper so that you've got a clean bristle. And now I'm going to go through with my aqua painter onto the mellow moss. and blend my Mellow Moss. And since the Mellow Moss and the Hunter Green um, are both greens, and it's okay if they blend together a little bit in the leaves, in fact, it would actually be good if they did, um, I'm going to intentionally pick up some of that Hunter and put a little bit of it into my mosses. So I'm not going to wait and let the moss dry. I'm going to go ahead and go straight into the Hunter, being careful that I don't touch my blue flowers. And you'll see here what I was talking about, about you need a lot less pigment of the darker color because a little bit goes a long ways. These darker colors blend a lot of the ink. All right, looks pretty good. I'm going to consider that done. That's what you have. So that is how you watercolor with watercolor paper and markers. And um, markers will not watercolor on other papers. So don't try to do this with your um, very vanilla Whisper White card stocks. You want to make sure that you're using the watercolor paper. The way the, um, the fibers in the paper are, you're, just, you're not going to get this look on any other paper. So when you're using markers, you want to make sure that you use, to watercolor, you want to make sure that you use the watercolor paper. In the summer mini catalog, it's the Elements of Style stamp set, you can find where to purchase it. I showed you using this in the wood because I received the set for free at Leadership Conference this year. Um, and it was given to me in wood. It is also available in clear, however. Um, so this is the set, Elements of Style. It's available only through August 31st, so if you would like to purchase this. When you purchase this stamp set, Elements of Style, this month during the month of May, you will also receive a free package of designer brads. And you can pick out which of the designer brads you want. So that's nice little incentive for purchasing this stamp set this month. You will find full, complete, um, a supply list of everything you need to order to make this card also on my website at alleystamps.com. And I thank you for joining me today. Have a wonderful day.